How often did you fly on holidays and felt ripped off by the prices each airline charges the passengers? Well, I can tell you it happened to me a lot of times, especially the last time when I went to Tallinn in August 2021 with Swiss. Paying 240 Swiss francs for a plane ticket isn't exactly affordable for a short haul flight to begin with. Because of this, I prefer flying with low cost carriers with the likes of Wizz Air and EasyJet. Now, since all of them unbundle their services and catch customers with some Sometimes ridiculously low fares, as low as 5 euros one way, I want to give you a couple of tips how you can travel on a low budget. Yes, yes everyone, it's Vlad Borum and welcome to my latest boop 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 video. Um, as you can see, this is the airport, Basel Euro Airport and where am I going today? As I said in the previous video, it's going to Belgrade. And I'm very much ready for this trip, even though it has been so spontaneous, I didn't even plan to go this year to Serbia, but because like last year nothing was planned and this year it will not be any different, I'm going again to Belgrade. And this is the first trip of the year, how cool is that? It's already January and I'm going on a trip, by plane. Alright guys, what are we waiting for? Let's get into the terminal. Just before I kick it off, thank you Didrik for being my executive producer and if you, my dear viewer, want to become one too, check out the first link in the description down below, it will lead you to my Patreon page. Number 1. Choosing a destination Picking a destination isn't easy, so one thing you could do is just going to some website which gets the best possible deals from your own city. A good one is Skyscanner. There you can pick your desired departure place and then pick the option can't decide where. That way you can see which destinations offer the lowest fares. If you have multiple airports within reach of your house, pick the one which is mostly covered by low-cost airlines, because those tend to avoid the bigger airports like Zurich, Munich, London Heathrow, etc. Number 2 buying the ticket. For low-cost airlines, I highly advise you to book directly on their website as they typically offer the best price and offer all the options which you can book with the ticket. Normally you have to pay for the check-in luggage, additional carry-on luggage, check-in at the airport, seat reservation and so on. My advice is to be conservative with the additional fees and get only what you really need. I for my part can live with a having a seat in the middle or in the aisle and also I can travel with a lot less luggage even on a longer trip. Make sure to buy the ticket in the currency the website primarily uses, as changing it to your own currency will be in every way more expensive than using the default one and taking the exchange rate of your credit card or bank. Number 3. Choosing the right luggage piece When traveling with a full service airline, you'd get the privilege of carrying a whole suitcase with you. Well, in the case of a low-cost airline, it is also possible, but mostly with a high price tag often surpassing the fare's original price. Here I recommend you the perfect luggage piece for your travel duration. When traveling for at least one week and going in the winter or during a colder season, I suggest taking a regular suitcase, because winter clothing can be heavy and take a lot of space. Also, you might pack some other pair of shoes into the suitcase, so the space will be definitely needed. Between 3 and 7 days, regardless of season, I recommend you the carry-on suitcase. This one will fit a lot more in than a regular rucksack or handbag, while at the same time it offers a lot of comfort with having rolls, so it is easy to roll it on the airport. Another option is the duffel bag, which can fit even more stuff than a carry-on suitcase, because it is more flexible. The good thing about it is that it is packable and that it can fit easily into a suitcase and then on the trip back when you tend to come back with more stuff than with what you came on holiday, you can just unpack it and use it as a carry-on bag. For trips which are less than 3 days, just get a messenger bag or a rucksack which can fit under the front seat. Those bags are big enough for the most essential things to take with you. Don't underestimate their size as I went a couple of times that way on a trip and even managed to bring some stuff back home. Number 4. Packing the luggage How often did you pack your suitcase and found out that you can't fit all the stuff in, even though it isn't much? Or how often did it happen that you couldn't close the bag when returning home and the bag is insignificantly more filled? Those things are mostly due to an inefficient packing technique by either throwing all the stuff into the suitcase or just putting the stuff folded into the suitcase. 
My recommended technique is to roll the clothes, as that way you can save a lot of worthwhile space. Make sure to roll the clothes as tightly as possible. You can do that with underwear and socks too. Alternatively, you can use one of those vacuum bags where you just put in the clothes and suck out all the air from the bag and carry more clothes than you have planned. Either way, the clothes are going to be wrinkle-free, so you don't have to iron your stuff when arriving at your destination. Nation. Number 5. Dressing up for the departure. Is it hot outside and you're literally melting while your destination is quite a bit colder? Should you travel with the shortest clothes possible? No, don't do that. Instead, put on the heaviest clothes on you. That way you can avoid wasting space in your luggage. Airlines don't ticket jackets and hats as separate pieces, so if you take them with you, wear them in the plane, or at least hold them in your arms. Who knows, maybe inside the plane it is going to be a bit chilled and you might need a bit of warmth when flying. Number 6. Getting to the airport. Airports usually aren't in the most central locations and to get to one you got multiple options. You either drive with your own car, someone fetches you with his own car or you get there by public transport. The option of fetching is good if you have a good friend or family member who has free time to drive you and pick you up. Driving on your own is only good if the price for parking costs and fuel costs less than the public transport, or if you go with at least one more person for a trip together. If you are a solo traveler, then the winner in this scenario is the public transport, hands down. Just buy the ticket either online or on a ticket machine and you're good to go. However, keep in mind that the trip to the airport might cost more than the entire flight, so choose wisely. Number 7. Surviving the temptation. You know how airports are. They got a duty free shop and they lure you with apparently low prices for certain things, especially stuff which is taxed highly. However, if you're looking for a refreshment like a bottle of water and some snacks, don't buy them at the airport. In fact, many of those things cost like double or triple the price, so get the things before you arrive at the airport at some supermarket. Drinks are impossible to get through the security check, so a tip I can give you is to get an empty water bottle through the security check and fill it up at the restroom with water. In most cases, the water is drinkable and the best thing about it, it's totally free. Number 8. Enjoying the flight. People enjoy their flights individually, so it is up to each person how to enjoy a flight. I always have my earphones with me and listen to some downloaded music and I got a few downloaded games on my phone which I can play offline. This can keep me busy for around 2 hours. If I'm getting hungry, I either eat some of the snacks I packed with me or I just buy something from the onboard service what doesn't break my bank. Depending on airline, the prices can be from either a bit expensive to utterly outrageous. What helps me there is to read the packaging properly and buy the stuff what has most stuff inside. Or even better, don't buy anything at all. Number 9. Getting from the airport to your destination. When landing in a foreign place, I suggest getting the map of your desired place on your phone downloaded for offline use. Google Maps offers this function. This will help you to get around very well if you're on foot or by car. As for public transport, it can be a bit tricky. Either look beforehand on the internet or Google Maps online, or you ask some of the airport personnel what bus or train you have to take. As for cabs, don't get the guys who ask you for a ride get yourself one first. Remember, taxis always cost more than a bus ride, so it is only more cost effective if you're traveling with at least one more person. Alright, I gave you all the tips for a successful flight on a budget. If you have any further suggestions, please write them down in the comments section. I'd really like to read your inputs and maybe some other viewer might appreciate them as well. Don't forget to have the holiday feeling already when preparing the trip and not when you just arrived at your destination, because the way is equally part of a trip just like exploring a new place. Leave me a thumb up if you came until this point so far, hit the subscribe button in order not to miss any of my future videos, check out my socials and my Patreon page in the description down below, stay tuned and I hope to see you the next time. Bye-bye.